Here we are, midweek again, but not just any week, it's Thanksgiving week. For many millions of Americans, that triggers very specific ideas about where you will spend the day, with whom you will spend the day, what you will eat on the day, and even what you will watch on TV. It's not hard to imagine that the day's menu itself was found by the pilgrims carved in stone in 1620 when they disembarked the Mayflower at what is now Plymouth. And of course, you know which stone it was carved in, Plymouth Rock. I know I grew up with the image of my Mayflower ancestors feasting happily with the local Wampanoag, and in my mind's eye, the scene looks like something out of a children's illustrated book. And I suppose that's just as well because the fuller story, what led to that feast in historical fact, is not so idyllic. 45 of the 102 who came off the Mayflower in December of 1620 were dead by spring. That they found such suitable land ready to settle was largely because the land had been wonderfully and providentially cleared by a mortal plague their language, not mine, that eliminated the Patuxet band of natives from which Squanto, or Tisquantum, had been kidnapped several years earlier. Squanto himself picked up the English, English language during his forced time in Europe. His tribe, back in what we now know as Plymouth, picked up the deadly disease left by previous European adventurers. Whatever they did on that fall day in 1621, they all did it with an enormous weight of death and suffering in the recent past. They were giving thanks to Almighty God that they were alive. Anything else was gravy. So here we are, 399 years later, with Thanksgiving scheduled and an enormous weight of death and suffering in the world due to the COVID-19 pandemic currently raging. The epidemiological imperative to stay home and not congregate to eat and drink indoors with people from beyond your household looks as if it's going to be ignored by millions of people, which is a shame because you can look across our northern border to what has been happening in Canada in the weeks since their Thanksgiving on October 12th. It's scary, sobering, and enough to make you want to be creative in your approach to Thanksgiving and ask what it's all about anyway. Looking at a fuller history of Thanksgiving actually freed me up to think of it as a more flexible holiday. For starters, traditional American Thanksgiving as portrayed in popular culture and children's books is a relatively recent thing. Pilgrim Edward Winslow's brief account of the event in a letter back to England was published at the time but received very little notice in the US until the 1840s, and certainly not much imitation. A more general attitude of giving thanks, thanksgiving, though, exists in most civilizations and is not confined to specific days in November. Combining gratitude to God with the fruits of the harvest can be done almost anywhere and any time the time is right. This past Sunday, we read one of the Psalms in church and for a good serving of gratitude to God, I recommend psalms. I'll also note that many of the psalms are actually pretty matter-of-fact as they describe the trials and tribulations and sufferings of this life and the frustration of dealing with people with whom you don't agree. Take Psalm 106. I'll read just the first three verses. Praise the Lord. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good for his steadfast love endures forever. Who can utter the mighty doings of the Lord or declare all his praise? Happy are those who observe justice, who do righteousness at all times. All times, not just a specific day, not just one particular act, but happy are those who observe justice, who do righteousness at all times. An attitude of gratitude is not something that depends on being in a particular place with particular people eating particular foods. And that frees you up truly to celebrate this Thanksgiving by giving thanks and knowing that you are part of a way longer tradition. Call some distant family and friends. Zoom if you can. Savor what food you have and realize that you don't have to eat turkey.
Thanksgiving is bigger than all of that. Thanks be to God.